Joining us from New York is Lincoln Mitchell, professor of political science at Columbia University and the author of The Democracy Promotion Paradox. Many thanks for speaking to us on Al Jazeera. What does the itinerary of both candidates in the last few hours tell us about the state of the race? Well, one thing that really struck me about today is that Donald Trump is going to Iowa. Iowa is a medium-sized state that should be in the Republican camp. If Donald Trump has to go to Iowa today, that tells you that he's a little bit worried, right? Joe Biden spends a lot of time in Pennsylvania. As you pointed out, 20 electoral votes, very, very close race in 2016. The polls now look better for Biden, significantly better for Biden than they did for Clinton a few days out four years ago. So it may not be as close as we've seen, as we think, but he's going to a state that he has to win. And Trump spent some time today in a state that he should have already wrapped up. Now he's going to Michigan at the end, as you pointed out, and that is legitimately a swing state, but it's a state where he's down five to 10 points. I think we need to be careful. The states where these candidates are going are the states where we would expect them in any kind of a race, but the data we're seeing, and even if we run it through our fear or our concerns about 2016 and the polls being inaccurate, which they were not entirely inaccurate, it looks pretty good for Biden. Anything can happen, particularly with regards to voter suppression and voter intimidation and questions around counting the votes in places like Michigan and Pennsylvania. We have had significant early voting this time round. Which candidate do you think is likely to benefit from that? Well, so far we've had, as you pointed out, 91 or 92 million early votes cast. That number will slightly go up. The question I ask is, are those voters who would have otherwise voted, right? I suspect that if you just counted early votes and absentee votes, Biden would win big. Trump has been encouraging his people to go out on the day of. But what that means is that Trump will possibly win a state like Pennsylvania or Michigan on Tuesday, but then lose it when all the votes are counted. Votes are counted. And what Donald Trump will try to do is to say, let's just announce a winner. We shouldn't count all the votes. However, uh, a basic understanding of democracy is that you count all the votes. You don't just stop counting at some arbitrary time. Uh, indeed. And there's been a lot of chatter about what could happen in the hours and days after the election, allegations of voter fraud, votes that can be thrown out. What is the likelihood that we won't have a clear result on November the 2nd? And how would that play out? Well, we have to, again, this is America, it's state by state, and each state has different laws, right? So on Tuesday night, November 2nd, no, on the night of the election, November 3rd, um, the main thing to look at, the first thing to look at is Florida. There are three states on the East Coast, essentially, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, that are considered must-wins for Trump, and Biden would very much like to win one or two of those states. If Biden wins Florida, or if he wins North Carolina and Georgia, then we know that essentially this election is over and Donald Trump will win. However, if he loses those three states or if it's too close in those three states to announce a winner early in those states, then we'll pivot to the Midwest, the Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, where they don't really start counting the votes till election day at the earliest. And in those states, if it's reasonably close, we can expect not to know till considerably later in the week, easily Thursday, perhaps later. So. So we could easily not know for a few days. And when that happens, both sides will begin spinning and suing to, in, in Biden's case, make sure the votes are counted and that we have a democratic process. And in Trump's case, to stop the counting. So that will begin to play out right away. And then there is the potential for what happens on the streets. We know that there is evidence of militia activities, right wing uh, white nationalist groups in states like Michigan in particular, but also Pennsylvania and other places. So we're in a very volatile moment here in the U.S. OK, good to hear your thoughts. Uh, Lincoln Mitchell, Professor of Political Science uh, from Columbia University.